Welcome to the review of... The Night Of. It's the podcast with Faisal Butt. And Morgan O'Shea. It's the podcast you've always been dreaming of but never knew existed because not a lot of people are watching this show, apparently. We don't know what the numbers are. HBO, have you released them? But this show came out of nowhere. Well, actually, no. They've been hyping this up. Like, when I watch Game of Thrones, I'm in a good mood. And when you show me a... Uh, a preview for a show that's going to be coming out when Game of Thrones is done. I'm interested. They're just like, hey guys, don't cancel your subscription quite yet. We know Game of Thrones and Silicon Valley is over, but HBO is going to carry you through the summer. We're not TV, we're HBO. And they knock it out of the park again. Straight up. Because HBO was also apologizing, like, hey, we know you love True Detective Season 1. And then we came out with Season 2, and uh, we actually had to apologize for that. Because Season 2 was so bad. Season 2 is like a, a True Detective is basically a parody of Season 1 without the jokes. Yeah, I guess so, yes. Um, this is a, this is a great uh, this is a great show. If you've watched the show, which is why you're probably listening to this podcast, also... Here's a weird uh, fact. Um, when you watch the credits in the opening scene, like the opening credits, uh, it says uh, pr- executive produced by James, James Gandolfini. Gandolfini. I noticed that too. Like that's so amazing. Like HBO family is so tight that if you're part of that HBO family, you're like keep producing until you're even after yeah. you're dead. Post. <laughs> yeah, man. Post. Post. Uh, like they just give Mark Wahlberg like a fucking whatever you want to do credit on everything. He did like Boardwalk what about and everything. Entourage and football players. Yeah, Entourage and football and players. Done. <laughs> done. Um, I looked what, it up. Whatever you want, Mark Wahlberg. Whatever I, you want. I looked it up. HBO originally passed on the pilot, and then they later picked up the series because James Gandolfini and the director Steve Zalian. They said, okay, we'll make it a mini-series instead of a show. And then Tony Soprano died a month later. And so they were just like, all right, you know what? We'll still go ahead. And thank you, R.I.P. R. James shout Gandolfini. Out, shout out Tony S. Yes. Uh, this is a fantastic crime procedural gritty yeah, show. Gritty, gritty drama. And Typical HBO. Yeah, wait. Just like, I love HBO because like when they, the cinematography is just out of this world. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's just like HBO saying, go fuck yourself to... We know how to do this shit. Like, it's like... It's just amazing. It's amazing. So we'll just uh, summarize it real quick. Basically, Nas. Nas uh, Khan. Nazir Khan. Played by Riz Ahmed, who's going to be appearing in that new Star Wars Rogue One. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, He's getting his money. Good I love, job. I love that uh, brown people are getting work. I'm like, I love that the show exists and that there's a lot of like uh, Indian actors, and Pakistani, and I guess Iranian. Nas's dad is played by a, <laughs> a Persian guy, so that's the only thing that's weird. <laughs> but I'll let it pass. Uh, let it pass. You get one pass, HBO. And all right, so we're introduced to Nas. He's our main character, who we're going to be following his journey. Starts off, he's in a classroom. Uh, we, we can figure out he's, oh, he's in college, he's also tutoring a college basketball player, and the college basketball player is like, hey, there's a party happening, why don't you, why don't you come by? And so Nas is like, cool, I'm in! Let's do this. Great! You know, you, you, you... He's kind of like a nerdy, meek guy. Yeah, it's like the high school dream, except that it happens for this kid like <laughs> two or three years later. In, in, in college. college, yeah. So so we're introduced to the rest of his family. His father, who's a cab driver. His mom works in a, in a Pakistani clothing store. It's set in Jackson Heights in Queens, so in the in the Pakistani Indo, Indian neighborhood. Yeah, and it's set in uh, 2014. 14. Um, yeah, because you were saying they, how... They talk about the Knicks. They talk about the Knicks getting Stoudemire and Carmelo together. They're very excited. Right. There's a lot of basketball references. I knew it was uh, October 26, 2014, because there was like uh, a graphic appeared on the screen telling me. It's, <laughs> it's Jackson Heights, and it's uh, October 2014. And then we, you know, we get to see this is uh, kind of like an insight into a traditional... Pakistani Muslim household. Yeah, him and his brother are like first generationers, so they're they're like straight New Yorkers. They're just talking about the Knicks, and the parents are stern. HBO, like 
Game of Thrones aside, I mean, they have like some great racism in their show, and uh, and I knew that that was going to be expected when you're dealing with like, you know, this brown Muslim guy. But now we're watching like the the family talk, and Nas is like, "I'm going to a party tonight, a team party," and the mother's like, "Where?" and he's like, "You know, Manhattan," and she's like, "I, I don't like you going to these types of things," <laughs> and Nas is insinuating, "Oh, what?" because it's like a black party, and then the mother's like, "I didn't say that," but like clearly, that's exactly <laughs> what she means. I also like how she's like, "I don't like you going to these types of things," like he's ever been to anything. <laughs> yeah, which he clearly, <laughs> clearly is not. <laughs> So uh, Nas gets ready, he's waiting for his friend to come pick him up. And actually, this is an interesting scene because Nas is sort of coaching himself. He's just sort of standing on the corner and he's like, hey, what's up? Yeah, hey, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm just coaching. I'm just coaching. I always, uh, I'm wondering, you always see that in movies, you know, people like coaching themselves. Does anyone yeah. ever do that in real life? Like stare at a mirror and is like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, nice to meet you. I do that. You do that? <laughs> yeah, I do that in elevators. Maybe that's why uh, I'm so bad at... Every time I go on an audition <laughs> for something, uh, yeah, I get straight Robert De Niro. You talking to me? You talking to me? Uh, hey, hey, my name is Morgan. Nice to meet you. But Maybe I should practice more. I think I'd, you should. I'd be uh, better at introductions because I always like... And I better at podcasts. <laughs> Am I right, folks? <laughs> hey... So yeah, so so basically we've we've been introduced to this character and we kind of get that he's like meek, uh, you know, he's kind of a shy guy, doesn't have a lot of experience. Uh, his friend calls and his friend bails on him. Oh dear, typical. Ah, my night's ruined, but I really want to go to that party. And he does whatever a kid has to. Steals his dad's cab. Steals his dad's typical story. Yeah. His parents are in bed watching, uh, probably bootlegged satellite, <laughs> watch Pakistan TV programs, steals the keys, gets in the cab, and he's off to Manhattan. For some, for some reason, he doesn't have GPS. Yeah, I guess it's 2014. And I guess GPS was around. The what? iPhone was around. Yeah, I guess. Maybe he didn't have one, but he's kind of lost. He also does not know how to turn off the, the sign the on-duty, off-duty sign. That's right. So he's confusing a lot of people. A lot of New Yorkers are, are pissed off. It's great, too, because he's a brown cab driver driving past a white guy. <laughs> and the white guy's like, Turn off your own building, man! <laughs> and, like, it's like a That's bizarro <laughs> racism. You know, and he's un, unbeknownst to him. Uh, so weird scenario. He's pulled over, and these two white guys get in. And uh, they're like, we need to get to 23rd Street. And he's like, no, uh, it's not my cab. Uh, the, I'm off duty. And they're like, what? We're not going anywhere. And then the cops pull over, right? Some off duty. Yeah, so or... this is kind of like the first suggestion of like, oh, man, like cops just trying to do their job. That's right. They're like, hey, is there a problem? My off duty sign doesn't work. He thinks he's fucking busted. But instead the cops... You know, they kick out the, yeah, the two the upper frat boys. middle class white people. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. They're like, hey, you want to get out of the cab or do you want to go to jail? And they're like, oh. And they're like, fuck you to the cab driver. So uh, they get out. So they seconds take Seconds later. Cops leave. Hot girl gets in. Hot Immediately drifter after. girl. And so he's like, no, you, you got It's not my cab. You, you got to get out. I, and I, then off he looks duty. up. And he, yeah. Connects eye contact through the rear view mirror she's like typical kind of drifter girl looks off into the distance and wants to get away and so he's like well where and she's like the beach it's like this is manhattan so i'll take <laughs> you, you to go this, to a river <laughs> this polluted river uh, and then that's where the next scene it basically picks up the car is parked and they're just basically talk they seem to be getting along uh wait i wrote some notes but you know she's kind of like Again, a, a drifter, but kind of being poetic. You yeah, know, it's she's... like kind of like typical for fucking like read too much Jack Kerouac early twenties. You know, they're staring at the other side of the city, and she's like, "Don't you wish you could transport yourself?" <laughs> I know. And Nas again, again, another thing. He's like meek, and you very suggestible. Yeah, he and does not have a lot of experience with women, so he's just sort of agreeing with everything she's sort of saying. You know, and. Uh, uh, I, I, she basically says, like, I can't be alone tonight. And so... And he says something like, tonight feels different. So that's kind of like some weird <laughs> foreshadowing. 
<laughs> so he's like, okay, they're going to end up, uh, he's going to end up at her place, which they do. They park the car and they're about to walk into her house when... They run into Bodhi. Bodhi, Bodhi from, from The, the wire. wire. And some of his sketchy friend. And, uh, yeah, his sketchy friend who doesn't say anything. And the only reason that Nas is interacting with, with this character is because he, he says, what? What'd you say? And then, again, HBO, an HBO show with this racism. He says something about, like, uh... Bomb or something. Yeah, like you... A little mutter. Yeah, he's basically saying something like, yeah, you, you, you terrorist D. Terrorist doing terrorist deeds, something about a bomb, and now it's like, what? What'd you say? And then, and then Bodie, whatever his character's name is, <laughs> we should probably know that. Uh, he's basically just as antagonize him, and the girl just sort of gets him. And Nas, you, yeah, you should know better. You're walking with this hot girl in in her house, and these two guys are starting up with you. Just let it go. Yeah, let it go. And they, uh, those two, walk off, and they walk into the house. Now Nas and this girl Andrea. Uh, they're getting they're getting fucked up. They're drinking. Uh, they're having more uh, ridiculous drunken conversation. Yeah, they're doing some pills. Yeah, some of those 2014 mm-hmm. New York ecstasies Ecstasy, or whatever yeah. it is, Molly. Yeah, and again they're rolling. Yeah, she's like is that. What they used to say back then. <laughs> Think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy, I'm rolling. <laughs> and she offers them a drink. And keep in mind, Nas is like a Pakistani Muslim guy. Uh, but he, look, he's doing pills and he's drinking because that's, it's just what women do <laughs> or women make you do just sort of, yeah, uh, gotta, forget you, about religion. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta give up all your beliefs for the pussy. Just, uh, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but yeah, basically he's like, all right, for now I'm not Muslim. Uh, I'll forget about that. And so... So all of a sudden, she pulls out a knife and puts her hand uh, with her fingers split on the table, and she's like, watch this. And she just basically, as if she was a pirate, just sort of brings the knife down uh, and narrowly missing her fingers, but it, like, lands in the table. She's like, oh, my God. That's, and, and Nas is kind of freaked out. Like, yeah. that's that's weird. That's crazy. You're, you're with some strange girl doing pills, drinking. Uh, she pulls a knife out, and so anyway, so they have some more discussion. I mean, usually that's par par for the, for the course, course, but that's, he's, he that's doesn't who, know what the that's course who, is. That's who Morgan dates. <laughs> uh, that's like that's what, what I find on Tinder on a Tuesday. That's Morgan's reality. So now uh, they start making out and start getting hot and heavy. But then she uh, gives him the knife and puts her hand down. And what happens, Morgan? He stabs the fuck out of her hand. I don't know if it was like I think she kind of suggested like let's go a little bit further. No, I think you, you think I think he I think his aim was to not stab her. <laughs> was hoping he'd get lucky. That was gonna like impress her, uh, turn up the mood the mood a bit. His yeah. adrenaline would have been going through the roof. Absolutely, but then he stabs he her. Swings and he, they clearly he's like stabbed her hand. She doesn't really react as if like ah. She's I think like that was kind of. That was like a bonus, because I think she got turned on by that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> her plan came into effect. Yeah. His kind of backfired. And she leads him upstairs, and where they obviously probably get it on. You can and tell then, they're going to get it on because he brings out his asthma puffer. Right, which is uh, adorable, <laughs> definitely <laughs> sexy. <laughs> so then it cuts now. In the next scene, uh, Nas is in the kitchen. He just and he wakes up. He wakes like, up like, oh man, oh, I'm a bit groggy. Oh, with all the, the I'm sure I didn't stab that girl last oh, night. With all the pills and the drinking. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, at least I got laid. Yeah, you know, he's, first timer. He's got water. Yeah, I think so. He's probably got a new fetish. You know? Okay, <laughs> great. My first time having sex and it and involves I stabbed a person. stabbing someone. That's the only way I can. Get it on now. Maybe I'll just go say goodbye. Thanks, thanks for the sex and the stab. Let me just go upstairs. Opportunity. Nas walks upstairs and uh, and okay. So now the night of. So now we've figured out where this show is going. Nas walks she's into more than once. She's de- dead. There's blood splattered. Dead by stabbing. Um, the way it's shot. I mean, it's pretty gruesome. They don't show it. Yeah, but they we just they sh- flick on the light and then they do a quick flash. Quick and flash. We we see. Nas sober up immediately and just sort of like panic uh, and then stumble through the apartment running downstairs where he 
Where I think he just runs out the house, right? Yeah, he, he just runs. Like, uh, there's really? nothing more sobering than, like, a little dose of reality mm-hmm. when you're a little fucked up. Um, well, when I closed, before I closed my eyes, she was alive. Now, I closed them and went to sleep and woke up and now she's dead. Uh, he freaks out, runs out of the apartment and runs to the cab. The, the door, uh, you know, he walks out. The door obviously closes, but it's one of the apartments where it locks from the inside, obviously. Yeah. But you need a key. Um, there's probably a better way to explain it. But, like, see how frantic I was getting? That's not. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, that the instant. whole show, like, even though, even before the murder, everything is just so tense about this show. Yeah. Like, the whole time. Like, when he gets, like, pulled over and the cops show up, you're just like, oh, my God. Like, and you know it's HBO. You know something fucked up is going to happen. So... They're not here telling a story about this guy going to a party successfully. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. That would make for a, a 12 minute show. <laughs> so Na- Nas, run- Nas runs out to his cab and realizes he does not have keys. He runs back to the door, which is obviously locked now because the door locked on him. Uh, he's like, shit. Um, he, he smashes the window and then puts his hand in, try to unlock the door, which he does, but he also cuts himself. He's cut. You dummy. Goes upstairs. Oh, do you know? to grab the key from the, yeah, from exactly. the crime scene. But he also takes the knife. There's a knife. Uh, there were still some drugs, too, I think. Yeah. Uh, he grabs yeah. all that shit. He grabs the knife that he like, stabbed her. Initial stab. The accidental stab? stab? Yeah. I don't know if it was accidental or not. I, I'm going to say it was. No way this guy had aim. Grabs that stuff. Uh, and then in this scuffle again, uh, an a neighbor is woken up because he hears, you know, uh, some, a window glass smashing. Sees this uh, kid. So he sees run Nas run out, run down the stoop, run to the cab, gets in the cab, and drives off. And then Nas, uh, again, <clears throat> pretty frantically, he's driving the car he's not really paying attention uh, and he makes an illegal turn great the cops are there and the cops pull him over these cops new cops they're just on the job yeah they're doing the graveyard shift uh, they're you know, tired they're kind of arguing whether they should like book him or not you know the one guy's like just let him go this is dad's cab the girl's like no nah, he's fucked up yeah, they're clearly about to administer a test, see if he's driving under the influence, influence for a DUI, and that's when the cops get uh, a hit on the radio saying there's breaking and entering, breaking and entering, yeah, uh, not far from where they've pulled uh, pulled over Nas. So what they do is because he's got a cab, they leave the cab there, they handcuff him, put him back in the cab, uh, cab, put him back in the cop car. And bring him to the scene of the crime. Back to the scene of the crime where it all started. And Nas is like, oh shit. I just ran away from here. And that, it's, what I was uh, noticing was brilliant about the scene is they get there. And so these cops are like, oh, it's a breaking. They're thinking it's a breaking and entering. So it's just like, okay, they'll just knock on the door. Nas knows. He's the only one that knows when they go inside what they'll find. And he's just waiting for that realization, that turn. Like, oh shit. They're gonna find a dead body, like a a body that's been slashed. <laughs> cops and go in; they just realize what's going on. A couple of cops come out. One of them, one of the rookies that had arrested him, uh, is already throwing up because of like how gruesome. It's his first week on the job. First week on the job. You would think that they uh, they'd train a little better? Like if you're gonna be a New York police officer, they'd show you some stabs. So maybe some horrific. Horrific images yeah. from Rotten.com. Or Rotten.com. Something. something. Faces of death. Hey, you g- might run into this <laughs> on your first day. Apparently not, though. So He's shocked. He is. Uh, we're we'll introduced some more characters. Uh, Detective Box gets the call, and he makes his way to the scene. Uh, he's like the type of guy that seems like he's waiting for that three in the morning death call. Yeah, he casually just is like, okay, on my way. Pops in a classical music tape, probably. <laughs> may or may not. I have a, I'm assuming he was an alcoholic at some point. For oh, all for the, sure. For all he the was. shit he's dealing with, but he seems like he's pretty clean. He arrives, and then of course he he's a detective on the scene. He's controlling everything, so he's taking care. And all of a sudden, now there's some witnesses too. The witnesses, the witness that originally called, he he shows up. 
Bodie is back there. Bodie from The Wire. Oh, he's Oh, yet. we forgot to... Yeah, the, the racist... The racist dude. We should figure out what his name is. Bodie from The Wire comes by just by himself now. His friend's not there. Yeah. He's like, oh, so that shit really did happen. That terrorist got fucked up. Or so, fucked that girl up. And so so now the detective has got some leads. Okay, what's going on? Now, the cops that originally picked up Nas, uh, and they're the first ones, I think, to arrive on the scene. Yeah. Uh, the detective notices, like, hey, why do you have some? You have someone in the back of your cop car? And they explain the situation, and they're like, okay, well, you guys have to stay here. Bring that dude to the station. So Nas is transported and given to some other cops who... Subsequently bring him to the station. And he already thinks, like, he's done. He's done for. Yeah. He asks, like, oh, is that girl dead? He's got, yeah. (laughs) While they're transporting him, he asks the the cop, is she dead? Now, how would Nas know if if the victim was a he or she? Oh, man. And this is, like, kind of where it gets to, I think, sort of, like, the overall theme of the show so far is just, like, people just trying to get their job done. Yeah. They're like, they transfer these cops. Everyone just has no idea what's going on. There's a lack of communication. And uh, they just think, they drop him off at the station. The guy at the station just thinks he's a witness. So he's just sitting there, knife in (laughs) in pocket. He's got a knife in his pocket. He's coming down off drugs. And he's just basically waiting there. Uh, And so, yeah, there's some tense scenes there. Uh, They bring the witness that originally called uh, the cops... And so he's now in the cop station. Uh, and we get some more hilarious back and forth between some of the cops. Uh, and it's around this time uh, the detective shows up he to the shows station. Up. Yeah. With, the, with the cops that made the original arrest. Nas is about to take a break for it. He's like, he realizes no one's really doing their job. He sees an opportunity to leave. He's actually about to walk out. Just walk free. It seems like a pretty slack cop station. Yeah, not much security in the police <laughs> station. And then he's walking and then sees the detective, so he turns around, goes sits next to, like, a hard ass that's been, like, fucking giving him the eye. Yeah. Again, HBO with the racism. There's some subtle subtlety racial exchanges going on throughout the night, uh, especially directed at this guy's character. Now, um... So, because of the miscommunication, uh, something was messed up in that originally Nas was picked up for a, a DUI, but they never gave him a breathalyzer. So, essentially, he's free to go. Yeah, they're like, you fucked up, you didn't give him a breathalyzer, it's been six hours already, we can't do that now. Just search him, then let him go. Meanwhile, main cop... The detective... Detective is, uh, is on the scene talking about like this slash victim... Cops are patting him down while they're having a conversation with the detective. About the crime. Uh, when the suspect is riddle, <laughs> riddly, literally under their nose. Uh, and there's another tense scene. And the cop is patting them, patting him down while she's listening to him describe. And uh, the murder uh, was committed by a... a and it's, it's like, always the last place you check, right? You yeah. Know, whenever you a, lose your keys and then you check every pocket... And it's always the last one you check. Mm-hmm. Same with Patton Down <laughs> in cinema. His left... It was in his left pocket. <laughs> left breast pocket. And we see that as he's describing what the murder... The murder. It's like, yeah, it was probably a murder weapon. Mm-hmm. It was probably like a 12-inch Inch serrated night. blade. Oh, Pull and out. she oh, pulls snap. that out of his pocket. And Nas, at this point, oh, you're... Oh, he's done. So... S- slap the cuffs on him now they're gonna book him for now they're gonna book him for murder yeah now uh now little Nas is in a cell that's when uh good old Johnny T shows up John Turturro John Turturro he's just so good at everything and I don't know he's he doesn't seem like he's not the uh ambulance chaser but there's another term for the kind of lawyer that he is uh we're introduced so he's there um Defending like a prostitute, prostitute. Like a yeah, like a cross-dressing prostitute. prostitute. Uh, you know, just sort of uh, sees this meek ass fucking kid just in the cell by himself. And as John Turturro is just finishing up the paperwork, he basically asks uh, the, the cop, "Hey, what? Why is that guy here? Oh, he uh, he slashed, uh, he, he murdered this white woman." 
I don't think uh, he doesn't know that it's uh, like a murder yet. Does he? No, he's like just like oh, this guy seems like I could probably take advantage of. He he doesn't know that it's no. He finds out like uh, as he's leaving. It's like oh, so what is he in for? When he's trying to get him out. Yeah, because I think because John Turturro signs and he and he looks and notices Nas is in the cell, and I feel like John's character says something like. Uh, what's he in for? Uh, I think I think murder. I think he was picked up for murder. John Turturro leaves and walks past the cell, and then turns around, and then comes back, and he's like, "Oh, I'm his my client. Yeah, I'm his lawyer." And then what? You're his lawyer? Yeah. And then that's when uh, we get the scene where Nas is talking to John. So maybe there. I can't remember. You guys send us an email. Remind send us. Send us an email. That's <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know because he's trying to get him out. He's like, all right, well, let's get this kid out. And they're like, no, they're not going to let him out. He's in for murder. He's like stabbed the shit out of the girl, and he's kind of shocked. He's like, oh, what did I sign myself up for? Yeah. And so, you know, John Turturro's like, okay, don't talk to anybody. Don't say anything to anyone. That's pretty much like the, the, the story, like the show's whole thing. Like that's what they intro on like the, on the trailer. Don't talk to, to anybody. anybody. Yeah, don't say anything. And so, uh, oh my god. So then, he uh, calls up his dad. Calls up his dad. Uh, I've been sent for... They, they think I did something. They think I... It's That's ridiculous. Right. I mean, throughout the show, we get some scenes where, where the, the family's like, Where's Nas? Nas didn't come home. Uh, yeah. Yeah, his brother he, actually like wakes him up. Wakes up the parents. Say, hey. They're trying to fi- figure out what happens. They get the phone call. He's like, yo, Nas I'm gets downtown. His... Yeah, I've been arrested. I didn't do it, but I've been arrested. For murder. And then that's kind of where the show ends. The, the Not... dad runs out. To get into his cab. Not knowing where to go. Just yeah. as a concerned parent. I'm coming, son. <laughs> he runs out and notices the cab is missing, and he's just standing in the middle of the street. And then that's uh, that's the end of the first episode, and you're like, "Holy shit! This was the best 120 minutes of television I might have ever seen." That's right. Yeah, as a pilot is concerned, this was fantastic. It's so so good. Highly recommended. It's the night of. Um. We're going to do some more of these. Yeah. Okay. I guess if you want to get in touch with us, you could just message us at, on, on Twitter. I'm at Faisal Butt. I'm Morgan Standup. And uh, tell us how much you hate this show and how uh, how our audio is off and how we miss key, how we missed your favorite scene. Yep. Uh, and we'll figure out. If we get enough emails, uh, maybe we'll do an apology podcast. Because uh, I think it's only nine episodes. So we'll do a tenth one of being yeah. like, yo. And then we'll just like, <laughs> we'll do like uh, George Lucas. And we'll go back and then we'll tweak the original. We'll tweak this podcast. We'll re-record it. But we're already like uh, two weeks behind already. So we got to get this done. Yeah, ASAP. So uh, Faisal's a dad. I'm a piece of shit. It's hard great. to connect. Uh, so be on the lookout for the for the next episode which of the drop. review of the, of the night of of the night of. All right, man, we're amazing. Oh fuck, it's like right before thirty minutes too. Oh, we fudged up. No, that's perfect. <laughs> it's the HBO music.